Hello everyone, this is Nicole Picador for Ellen Hudson for the day. I am very excited to be featuring a project using a brand new product that is releasing in just a couple of days. This is a part of 2018 July release by Ellen Hudson. It's a part of the Essentials by Ellen release. This is called Inner Mermaid. It's a really pretty stamp set with lots of cool and fun sentiments. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to start with some Yupo paper and put a dirty towel underneath it. This is a towel that I like to put underneath my project surface just to catch any extra alcohol inks I'm going to use. To create a background for today's car, I'm using three shades of alcohol inks. These are aqua, turquoise, and stone washed. I wanted to create some emerald color and light blue and some dark blue to create a different depth of ocean. And I thought ocean themed car will be perfect with the stamp set because we have a mermaid, so why not? And since we're heading into the summer, I thought it would be perfect to create some really cool field card. So I'm dropping a bunch of alcohol ink drops over the Yupo paper. And when I'm done dropping the colors that I want, I poured over some blending solution to help the spread out the spreading of the alcohol inks throughout the surface of my card. And I'm going to kind of tilt the cards here and there to create the movement of the ink until I won. And then I'm going to speed up the drying process using some heat tools. I'm not going to completely let it dry. And I'm going to drop some gold using the gold and mixatives. So here and there to create a gold puddle. I wanted to add some shine and shimmer to it to match the sequence we're gonna use for this card. My intention is to create a ocean themed sequence card or sequence shaker card. It's been a while since I created a sh shaker card, so I thought this would be a really fun one to play with. And after I drop the gold mixative drops, I'm going to speed up the drying with the heat tool as well. So the gold takes a little bit to dry, so I'm gonna let it sit on the side while I prepare the card base. The card base for today's card is a top folding card cut at four and a quarter by 11, and it's scored at five and a half. We're going to crease the folding line with the bone folder, and I'm going to use this as a card base for today. I cut down the alcohol background panel, and I'm, we're going to strictly, uh, not strictly, directly on, uh, directly adhere it onto the card base, I'm sorry, with some glue tapes. So I'm going to go ahead and put glue tapes on the back side of the panel that we created for the background and attach directly onto the shaker card, card base. So when that is done, it is time to create a window for our shaker card. I am using a Lawn Fawn stitched rectangular die. This is a combined of the small and the large set. So you can use whatever rectangular die set you might have, or you can directly cut it if you want. I'm going to use a medium size one to run this through my die cutting machine. This is going to give me a very clean and precise shaker card window area. You can use the inner part of that for another card. So save that for later. I'm going to use the frame part of it and we're going to create some shaker area. So to create a window, I need a clear acetate sheet. So I have cut the acetate window sheet to the size that fits this frame that we created. I'm going to use some glue tapes to put generous amount of adhesive on the back of the frame piece and then adhere the cut down acetate to create a shaker window. Now, we're going to go ahead and put some foam tape all over. You want to make sure you don't leave any cracks in between those foam tapes to make sure a small sequence and the beads that we're going to use don't escape from the card. And since I like to make sure the shakers, the sequence have enough area to shake around in the shaker window, I'm going to put two layers of foam tape. So you're going to put one layer all over the edge of this frame window. 
And then after you go around with the first layer, you're going to go on a second time directly on top of it to create a raised area. This should give you enough depth to put some sequins and some beads for the shaker card window and add, allow the elements to move freely within the window area. I want you to add a little bit of shell and the starfish elements into the shaker card area. So we're going to stem those images from the stem set. I'm going to use the coordinating die set for this inner mermaid stem set. For this image, I used a permanent black ink pad from Altenew to stamp these images. I wanted something very crisp and not fa non-fading ink, so I used that ink pad. And we're going to cut these out after matching the stem set with the, the coordinating die set. Using the coordinating die set saves a lot of time when you're working with small images like this. So this saves a lot of time by not having to fussy cut. One of the starfish, I wanted to make sure it adheres permanently onto the car. So I cut down the foam tape in a smaller pieces, and then we're going to adhere the biggest starfish from the set onto the card base directly. So this is gonna stay put in the shaker card window area. I'm just going to make sure I put it on the correct position within the shaker card frame. So you can see that I am putting the window in a place to get the idea of the uh, starfish to be positioned. And then we're going to adhere some sequins. So these are various sizes of sequins from Pretty Pink Posh. And we're going to use some clear ones. We're going to use some light blue ones. We're going to use some dark blue ones. I wanted everything to kind of match the background colors that we already created for this card base. And then add a little different shades of same color, uh, color tone. And then adding by adding the clear, you can add a bit of contrast as well. So I'm going to place this using the multimedia mat directly onto the card base area. This is going to make sure that all the sequins within the shaker frame area doesn't get all put it into one direction or one area. Sometimes when you create a sequence a shaker card, you see that the sequins tend to be stuck in one corner or one side of the card, so it doesn't really show the beauty of the sequins nicely. So I wanted to make sure those are adhered first, and then we'll pour over the other sequins and beads. I poured, I pulled off the backing of the foam tape on three sides, and I left the top part on here so that I can pour over those beads. I have some sparkling beads also from Pretty Pink Posh. So I'm just going to pour over those um, over the opening area that I created. I'm going to create some mix of beads. So I have some sh uh, shimmery beads and I have some clear beads. So we're going to pour both of them. If you want, you can also put the frame directly onto the card base and then adhere the window on top of it later on. I kind of did it in a different way. So whatever works best for you, you're welcome to do so. I added two different types of beads and then I poured some sequins over that as well. I also added some blue. I also added some clear ones. So a good mix of sequins are going there. I also added a couple of cutout shellfish, the, the, the seashells, and also the smaller starfish cutout image um, that we stamped earlier. Those are also going in there and moving with the sequins. After that is all done, I'm going to pull the backing of the last strip of the foam tape for the frame and then adhere it securely. And that finishes our sequence shaker area. Now let's dress up the card just a little bit. I'm going to take out this beautiful mermaid stem set image from the set and then stamp it onto a Nina Solar White cardstock with permanent black ink pad. I'm going to add two different shades of colors onto this stamped image using the Distress Ink and the Ink Blending Tool. I used the Mermaid Lagoon and Dusty Concord. I thought a mix of purple and blue would be perfect 
contrast for the blue background card base area and sequence shaker area and just adding a bit of two different colors over here blue and purple would add a nice pop on the mermaid stamped image so i'm going to mix those in by blending in onto the stamped area using the ink tool and then we're going to cut this out using the coordinating die set as well i just think that this mermaid image is so pretty so you can use it in various colors uh, cards as well and you can stamp this image all over the card base area to create a fun background as well. So I'm going to place it. I wanted to kind of offset onto the card and we are going to place it on the left bottom corner of the card. I wanted to add a little bit of shimmer. So I added some shimmer using the shimmery pen and I'm going to directly adhere these using the glue tape. So make sure you don't add the adhesive onto the tail part that's sticking out of the card a little bit. Since the frame is white and it's a huge contrast with our blue shaded backgrounds and the shaker card area, I thought it'd be nice to add some frame lines throughout the window. So I'm adding just a little bit of black lines to frame it. This would be a good way to bring in the set, uh, focus onto the center. And I took out, you are fantastic sentiments from the stamp set. I stamped it directly onto the card window, the shaker window, using the stays on ink. And that finishes the card for today. I hope you enjoyed today's card. I think this set deserves a lot of love. If you need more information for today's card, please make sure to check over the Ellen Hudson blog and I will add all the details there as well. Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you next time. Have a great day. Bye-bye.